welcome back to the channel. It's LC here with Public Eye Outdoors. We're uh, gonna do a little video today, a little how-to, a little uh, pack dump, a little bit of everything today with this uh, this new uh, setup that we're we're using. Hopefully, you can hear me. The wind's blowing pretty good today, so um, anyway, I wanted to go through the gear that I have and what I'm going to be using in this process. Uh, now before I get started, I want everybody to know that I'm I'm new to this too, okay? So uh, if you're a seasoned climber or a seasoned saddle hunter, this video, you may pick up some things here and there because, uh, you know, you can always learn. There's always something to learn from other people. But it's going to be kind of what my my setup is, how I use it, and uh, my method of climbing and shooting and some of the little things in between. So, uh, you probably, if you are a seasoned saddle hunter, you've probably seen some a lot of this already. But like I said, stay tuned, stick around, get to know the channel, get to know me. Um, so, with that being said, we're going to go through the pack first and how I would set it up and how I am setting it up. Now there's um, some things that I'm probably going to be adding here and there. Uh, obviously uh, just like anything in hunting you you never have everything you need right? We're always changing, we're always adding, taking away things of that nature with our gear so this is not going to be any different. You're going to upgrade Get rid of things that you don't necessarily need down the road, and uh, maybe you're going to add some things. So first off, with the pack here, we've got a Mystery Ranch Pintler. This is their uh, three-way open in the front. Okay, I love this pack for this reason, and. Uh, this is going to really come in handy with this this uh, saddle hunting. Now the method that I use is called uh, DRT. It's a double rope technique. Basically it's one rope but you're using two lines to, to get yourself up in the tree. We'll start out with the platform. This is a uh, tethered predator platform. An aluminum base, very light weighs like three pounds easy to use okay my strap will be on it at all times so that'll get shown a little bit more in detail here you see my uh, knee pads this is not a necessity but uh, they do come in handy if you're going to uh, kneel against the tree or just protection against the tree say if you your feet slip off and you, you come into the tree, you can, you, your knees will hit. Those come in really nice, okay? These are a military grade, and I'm not real, they're a little heavy duty for what I, for what I need them for, but uh, they, they kind of cinch up in the back of your legs, so I'm not real crazy about them. Plus this hard plastic uh, slips off of the bark real easily. So if you've got them, they'll work. Uh, if you don't, I wouldn't really suggest going out and trying to find these particularly uh, because like I said, they're great protection, but uh, for this application, they're probably not the best. Just get some uh, like volleyball, you know, some of those that you wear and like the sports ones. Okay, here on the side, we have my... This is my uh, camera stand up in the tree. This is very cheap, okay? This is, uh, and it's it it works cheaply too, okay? But it does the job. It gets it done for me. I don't have to spend a ton of money on it. It comes out to about two foot, two and a half foot all together. It goes on the side, so it's easy access. Once I'm up in the tree, Obviously, I'll have my 
this will probably be on me going in more than likely okay it's gonna make life that much easier when you get to the tree the one that I have here is the the mantis from uh, tethered tethered mantis I've got a uh, an added on bridge here that I put on there um, I know this is probably going to make a lot of guys cringe that know what's going on, but uh, I basically just have this bridge tied on, and uh, here you see the, that my ends are, are duct taped in so I can see if they're moving or not. But this bridge is uh, a bridge that normally would go on a, another higher quality uh well, I shouldn't say higher quality, a more professional uh, saddle for like arborists and things like that. So this is a very, very solid bridge and I'm not worried about it at all. The one that comes with the Mantis is the uh, Amsteel. This is rated for like seven to 8,000 pounds. So pretty safe, pretty safe uh, way to climb really. We'll have a screw-in hook here. Uh, whether I use that or not is up to the situation and trees if I can use it. Inside here we have my tether. So right here we have right here we have some hooks that I ordered from a company. Now this is a fairly new company, so. Uh, I can put the name of the company in the description, or in the description, or uh, I'll probably just put it here on the screen for you. But anyway, this is a uh, real simple uh, solution for ha uh, hangers up in the tree. Simpler the better. It's got four hooks, as you can see here, and I just kind of space them out according to the size of the tree that I'm probably going to be dealing with. So, if you can see, that's, you know, probably going to be a 8 to 10 inch limb, which is more than adequate for what I'm doing here. As we get in deeper, there's the old Prusik that was on that tether, and it's, I mean, it's still a good Prusik, but it's just, I don't trust it. Got your rope. Now this rope here is a 16 strand. This is old school 16 strand. It's probably a lot heavier than uh, needed. 80 foot of 16 strand rope, climbing rope. Obviously my gloves. I want my gloves, whether that's my hunting gloves or these. I just, I like the leather. These are already getting just worn down like crazy. I mean, they're, they're really soft in the fingers. So uh, that's gonna, kind of give you a good idea of how much that's going to wear on your hands if you're not wearing gloves. Always have gloves with you. And then I've got my throwing line. This is a this is a pouch uh, basically just off of eBay. It turns into a cube. You've seen it. I've got another video on this on my uh, channel. You can go back and watch this. Kind of see how this all works. But this is going to be my throw line. This will be what gets me up in the tree. Uh, unless I have a preset line. Now, I have gone out into some of these trees that I like to, or have wanted to hunt for a while, but just didn't want to deal with putting a stand up in them. Uh, I can take and throw paracord up in that tree and then tie off my rope when I get in the morning and run that rope up in the morning so I don't have to sit there and try to throw a throw ball up there in the middle of the darkness oh I do have a saw okay we will have a saw with us at all times and I uh, also have this is for basically a lounger you'll put this on you'll you'll clip this into your carabiner Okay, and you can lay back in it, so it's kind of like a recliner. They call it a recliner. That's it, and with all this, and my bow, obviously my bow uh, will be with me. 
This is uh, Matthew's Traverse. This is a 33 inch bow with a uh, uh, bee stinger. Uh, the bee stinger bars on it, so there's a lot of uh, length in this bow. And uh, I don't have a problem up there in the tree with it. You know, if you're up in a tree, it might be more beneficial to have a 20, you know, 28 inch axle to axle or something like that, but uh, you can get away. I can I can maneuver pretty easily with a 33 inch bow up there in the tree with uh, my uh, kick out bars and all that on it. So, all right. Anyway, that's the pack. Now, that's basically all that's in here besides your clothing, your food, water, whatever else you may have. So, with just this stuff, that being on my body, I would imagine I only have about 15 pounds in pack weight. This pack itself weighs like eight pounds, I think, or eight, yeah, eight pounds, something like that. Six pounds, maybe. There it is. Okay, got it. Let me show you this real quick. Hopefully you can see that up in the tree. So I've got a ball right there dancing around. I've got to get that down in between. Right there, boom. Okay. So I came off that branch up there. See the crook in the tree? That's where we're, we're tying off to, that branch up there. Putting on our rope. So pack your rope nicely as you can. Uh, one of the things that was explained to me, well not explained, I was just told from my sibling, my sister, which has done some climbing in the past. But she saw one of my videos and she's like, don't throw your rope in the dirt. And uh, never got an explanation for that, but I'm assuming, okay, and you all know what assuming does. But uh, my guess is that it's because that dirt will get in your rope and ruin it break it down a lot quicker and, and faster. Plus, it's probably not safe uh, being in the dirt because that dirt gets on, that dust gets on your rope and uh, becomes very slick. That's my thought process on it. Whether I'm right or wrong, I don't know. That's the only two things I can think of. All right, there you go. You tie that on. Now, depending on which way, you climb is going to determine which way you pull this through your tree. So if I was left-handed, I would probably want this to come off of the other side. So I would have to throw my line from the other side or I'd have to drag all this through, tie onto that other side and then put all that back in the box. So you're basically gonna throw off the side that you are. So I'm right-handed, I'll be throwing from my right-hand side all the time because what that's going to do is give me my tie off coming up the left hand side of the branch coming around leaving my carabiner on my left hand side okay and then my feeding line will be on my right hand side my strong side so when I pull and hoist I can use my left hand my power hand is down pulling and my feeder hand is my left hand. You get to the point where you can do that from either side. I'm sure I could do it, but it's going to be weird and I should practice that. There's no doubt in my mind. I, I need to practice that because there are going to be situations where you may not be able to use your strong side. So there we go. We have our line. Okay, we'll pull this back off. Now Slipknot would probably work the best on this, but I'm not... I'm not really down with all my knots right now, so. So I have kind of played with this system for, you know, I've only climbed with it like four or five times, so I don't have a lot of time with it. Uh, but I have picked up on a lot of things. A lot of lessons are gonna be learned uh, doing the process. Now, when I say the process, that's exactly what it is. It's a process that you have multiple moving parts to this whole system. 
So you have to you have to practice the process as a whole. You can't just Okay, this is my opinion. Now, there's a lot of guys that, you know, I see a lot of videos here on YouTube and stuff where the guys are, uh, you know, they're two foot off the ground and they're, they're running through everything with you, okay? Which is fine. Uh, I'm here to kind of explain things in a more realistic setting. I want you to know what you're gonna be dealing with when you get halfway up that tree and you got your pack on and, and it's too tight around your waist and you're like sucking wind because you can't let out your air. And by the time you get up to 15, 20 feet, you're about ready to pass out because your, your straps are too tight on your, on your waist belt, on your, on your pack, okay? Things like that you're going to run into. And if you don't practice the system, you're not gonna learn these things. So in my eyes, I think it's better to actually do the climb, do every step to every height each time that you're going to practice, okay? When I get up there, I'll take my bow up there and I will be shooting 50 yards through tree branches in the wind at a target 50 yards away because I want to be prepared mentally for something like that. I'll have a branch up there smacking me in the back of the head Okay, this is my own tree, so I don't really want to cut as any branches out of it if I don't have to. Um, but these are the things that you're going to run into uh, in the real life scenario. So I see my male lady. She may have my plastic carabiners. That's one of the things that I wanted to show you, the plastic carabiners. I've got, I've got a metal one here that I've been hooking my hooking my platform onto and carrying it up that way. But I'm hoping they just showed up. We did get our carabiners. We've got 10 of them. I've got two on one side here and one on the other side. These are an accessory carabiner. They're plastic. You can get these uh, on eBay, Amazon, whatever, okay? They're basically just a tactical plastic carabiner for gear. Not for climbing. These are not weight loading. They're good up to about 100 pounds. So you could put, you know, 25, 50 pounds off of this if you had to, but I don't know why you would want to. You're not metal on metal, you know, they're just plastic on plastic. Okay, we'll, we'll hook that onto there. Almost sounds like rattling antlers, huh? <laughs> to our lineman's loops. And that's how I carry my, my platform up. Now we're getting ready to go up the tree. We've got our line up there. So in the past here, I've tried multiple ways of doing this, getting my bow and my pack and all my gear up into the tree as I'm climbing. One of the things that I have found is that uh, if you can get away from using your pack as you're climbing, the better off you'll be. So right there, I would take this and pull that all up after I'm up in the tree and got everything set. So I'll go over here and show you how I tie that off. You're going to tie off your bow and your pack. Everything else is going to be with you that you need to get started up in the tree. The lighter you can be going in into the tree, the better off you'll be. Is I'm gonna take my knot here, just do a double, a double knot there, half hitch, okay? So when I get up in the tree, just like if you were in a tree stand, you're going to pull your pack and your bow up into the tree after everything's set up and you're feeling comfortable. Now, one thing that I forgot to mention in all of this, if you're doing camera gear, okay, I'm a self-filmer. I do my own hunts. I just film my own hunts. So everything I have, I have to do on my own. This right here is a saddle hunter's best friend, okay? It's light. This is a GoPro. This is the five. I really, uh, really like this GoPro. There's others out there, but, uh, this one, it seems to be the, the solid, 
of all of them. These are kind of an accessory camera uh, for your in the tree shots. This is, I found out yesterday actually trying to get all this set up. Uh, this was kind of a pain uh, maneuvering with that arm. So this, trying to use that and get me and everything else was, was not working. I needed this up there with me so I could get my whole system in the shot. So that's what we're gonna do today with this. If you've got any questions on a Blake's Hitch, uh, go to any other channel and those guys will explain these hitches to you or these knots a lot better than I can. I don't claim to be a professional at any of this, so I'm learning as I'm going. Dress your knot, get that nice and tight. You'll sit into it. And hopefully, if you've done everything right, it should tighten up and you should be ready to rock and roll. sure you get a knot tied in the end of this so if it slides out it's not gonna come totally out so we're gonna get up to our preferred height to tie this off go around the tree here, our branch. Make sure you're running the right way. Okay, now we'll cinch that up. I got a knot right here. I'm gonna adjust that adjustment screw a little bit in. So there, I think we're good there. Might be a little bit loose. Just lift up on it just a little bit. There we go. All right. set height we got our platform in my other camera is down at the base of the tree so until I get my pack up here and everything's set up we'll have to walk through it with the GoPro